Hello, this is Max Drake speaking. I just want to talk to you about a couple of uh, Windows productivity tools that you may or may not have heard of um, that may actually suit your style of work. I always find with productivity tools, it's got to be something that works for you and uh, then they end up being a lot more efficient. First one's called Power Toys. Um, it's a whole lot of little um, add-ons that I'll, I'll just walk through some of them shortly that you can do. It's a free one in Power Toys. Just the one thing with that, instead of it, if you go down to downloading and release notes and then there's in and on that um, directly there's an MS isolate up so that's very good for installing the other one that I want to talk about is this one called QT tab bar and what it does is in your whether you call it Windows Explorer or whether you call it file Explorer it's in your file navigation through your files and things like that it adds tabs into that so instead of actually opening up a whole lot of uh, Windows E's Windows E's Windows E's they have a whole lot of different file explorers for different places you just have one file explorer program open and it has a whole lot of tabs so it's easy to navigate in amongst um, that uh, that one's got a little bit of an oddie. One of the things with it is that you've actually got to install the original, this version for 1038, and then install the update, and then it works. And when you install the first one, you've got to log out, and then you've got to log back in again for it to actually memorize those sorts of things. There are some uh, documents and help, and uh, that's what I found I had to use to actually get it up and running. Um, so just going back to the Power Toys one, the Power Toys are down in your tray. So they start off... The control uh, actually I want to try this out here so if I just go right hand click here and go bugger wrong one <laughs> not that good is something that I've doing last time task manager and I come into task manager on startup you'll find that it comes through on startup and so it'll be enabled through here so when it starts it's actually enabled so wherever it is should be um, so just be aware of that so when it comes up now the nice thing which I quite like about this if I'm just going to right hand click and go on to settings here is that it has um, uh, some settings and stuff that you can do you can have dark or light modes etc 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 the fancy zones let's just go step through these things here now the nice thing they've got a whole lot of little add-ons that you can do and you can either have them on or have them off now the nice thing with that is if you're only using one or two frequently you leave those ones on so they're not sucking up a lot of your RAM and then and if you use a couple of the other ones later on, then you'd actually turn those on just for that specific time. So there's tools that are sitting there, but they're not firing up and not loading when you don't need them. So that, I find, is a very nice thing about it. So let's go into the fancy zone. So if we just fancy get split into the fancy zones, what it is, um, is basically it's how you split your screen if you want your screen uh, organised in a certain way. Like if you have it here or things, or you've got rows or grids or stuff, you can set it up into, if you want it, a whole lot of different tabs you can do it in a different way this is one I was just playing with here and I'm now going to apply it so if I just click apply nothing happens now the first program that I do I'm just going to select one of these programs and if I now hold down the shift key grab that program it says where do you want to put it you've got that set up so I want that one there um, so I've got another program here I select that program and I, I, I select the program now what's now what's happened to you? Something's frozen on me. There we are. I've select the program, do shift, and then I can go and bung it into the theme bob. If there's a third one, something like Excel, let's say, uh, no, not that one, and uh, 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 and I go shift onto that one and drag it, and it'll go into the third one. So it's sitting up there if I just needed to adjust. So I can adjust those and do it. So if there's a special styling that you want, uh, generally I don't want those sorts of things. I just basically dock left and I dock right, and I normally just have the two programs open, and then that's how I tend to work, or else I'm usually either in full screen mode. So that's one, it's sort of a nice idea, but uh, I won't be, if, if I do have a setup, it's nice to know it's there, but I wouldn't have it. Um, File Explorer Preview, you've actually got your normal Explorer previews where you can look at a Word doc, or you can look at some images. They've got two simple other ones here, you can view SVG files, or you can view Markdown, so instead of seeing all the hash, hash, hash for the the markdown you'll see an h1 tags and all that so sorry you won't see the tags you'll see it bold and all correctly as it should so you can have those on or off as well this one i'm quite interested in doing it's an image resizer so you can actually take a size of an image and readjust it i haven't got it 
at the moment, but it's something that I will be playing with because I do play with the images as well. There's a keyboard management one. I haven't quite got the hang of that one, you know, because it's basically saying, I've got this key, map it to this key. And you're suddenly thinking, well, I can't see the sense of it myself. I've got a whole load of shortcuts and I've got other tools that are mapping those. So it's not something I'll be using, but somebody else may want to remap keys that you want. Power Renamer is a really good one. If you've got a whole directory full of um, photos and they all have M, IMG or something at the beginning and you want to rename those, uh, they were taken in Boston or they've taken in Wellington and then you want to put a date onto them and then they actually have their individual things. It will just do all of that straight away for you. So that's quite nice. I do that once in a while, but not that frequently. But when I do use it, it's nice to have a tool available. And instead of having another program, this can just sit there turned off and it's not used. So that's a nice one there. Power Toys Run. This is really cool, but I just want to drop to the next last one here, uh, which is Shortcut. Now, what it says is uh, if you hold your Windows key for 900 milliseconds, this pops up, which is just a shortcut guide giving you indications. So if you use Windows and 1, it will open up that. If you use Windows and 2, it opens up that. Windows and 3, it opens up that. So this is really handy. So Windows and 4. So if I'm just there, if I just go Windows 4, it's going to open up my Excel. Um, if I go Windows and 1, it's going to open up my um, uh, 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 Firefox, etc., etc., etc. And what I actually do is if I find that I'm being busy and I'm jumping between two programs, maybe I'm doing a whole lot of photos, I'll move photos to there. So I don't even have to think what um, uh, thing it is. It just automatically, I can just remember one or two or three or four. So the ones that I'm jumping between is really handy to do that. So that's something that, uh, you, you know, it's, it's good to actually start learning a few more little short key cards. Stuff. The other one that I think is really wonderful is this one here. Power Toys Run. So what this one does, I've it, it, the default is out plus spacebar, but I've got something else mapped to that, so I've changed it to out plus C. So if I just come into here and go out plus C, now you just type the program that you want. So I'm just going to type um, note. So Notepad++. Plus plus. So instead of actually going off and hunting and finding the program that you want, it'll do this one. There's another one that I um, out C. Oops, out C. And if uh, thing called copy texting which is seriously cool that i use for, for uh, it's already running yet yeah, don't tell me off um that is quite good so if you've got programs you know what it is or something and yet you don't have them on your toolbar or something like that you can actually just go and grab those straight away so that's a great one to to do and uh, as long as you've got a, a thing that memorizes those um it works fine so that's the first program which I want to do, I want to talk about, which is the other one, the second uh, Power Toys, which is quite good. The second one is is QT Tab Bar. So this one here is you have Windows Explorer. And so here it is, and here's the directory. Now, I normally have 10 to 15 of these blooming things open, so I'm actually just going to open up a few. And what I find is that I'm down the bottom here, and I'm suddenly saying, oh, which, which directory, which one have I got? I've got one for downloads, I've got one for here, one for there, one for something else. I find it really frustrating. What this does, if you go into your options, into view and into options, and you can go QT tab. So suddenly you can actually have as many tabs as you want. So you can actually just suddenly say, oh, that's a directory that I want. This one here might be uh, my downloads directory. This one here is my video directory. This one here is my, oh, blimey. This one here is my screenshots directory. So I want to take some images from there. And uh, so these are the preview. So here's the preview of the image, which is the JPEG. So there's that other one in, in things. So depending, yeah. Uh, on how big you make that, you can get your preview to be big or small if you want those things. So if I want to drag and drop with this, so I can actually just go uh, copy and then I can move it into videos and clock it across there. But another way that you can do with this, which is seriously cool on this, is that you can do extra view to the left. So you can split the screen into two. And again, these have different, uh, are totally independent the way. This one here is down the bottom. So if you just drag another one, whoops, I'm just going to have to escape it like that. Let's try and activate down to here. I can actually have another one, and then I can go into that one there and actually just go, oh, sorry, middle mouse, and uh, just go into uh, too many. 
it's not actually it's opening this one here this one tends to be static in a way i don't know why now with that one again i'm still just learning about it uh, uh i can actually have an extra view on the bottom so i can actually have three of them all open in different ones so if i'm doing a lot of copying or moving files across or doing something between two different areas i can see where it comes from where it goes it's like the old norton commander which you used to have on the old dos prompt the other thing as well it has is it has this um a bar that you can uh, add on that does um, different views as to how things are um, and splits them that way as well and the other one there is I've only just come across this one here is there's a whole lot of options and things that you can actually do to play around with them and sounds and things Ugh. so that is something that I'm going to be using an awful lot so uh, the other thing as well with this if I just go into the options and uh, I can put the tabs at the bottom so I can have all my tabs at the bottom if you find those distracting. Although notionally, this one here, I don't think I'd use that frequently. So I'd most probably turn that off and I'd use it once in a while. And I'd actually have my tabs at the top because of the fact that's how everything else is actually working out. And because I'd actually been working in the main one and I'd have a secondary, most probably I'd actually have the secondary um, and not on the left but on the bottom because and then I'd actually um, drag it down somewhere because it's not something I'll be using most of the time this is the main one that I'll be doing but this one has the tabs wherever the tabs have gone now um, so uh, and with the tabs on here so this is where I'll be driving things from when I was copying files across to this other directory or whatever I'll be doing them through there um, I'd have my different views just to ensure that I'd actually got what I wanted coming through and this is absolutely fantastic. It is exactly what I wanted to have. Um, so um, I'm so user. I, there was a couple of other Norton Commander lookalike things that have come through into the later stuff, and I tried some of them out, and they worked when I was in DOS, but I'm so used to File Explorer now, I can't go to anything else. So this actually meets my needs. So instead of coming down here and suddenly saying, which one am I got to go? I'm going to copy from here and paste into another one down here. I don't have to do any of that. I can actually just do it all in one. So if you found this useful, can you please give the video a thumbs up? Um, uh, and I hope it actually helps with some of your own productivity. Thank you very much. For